the speed of light debunked. And now this is just a thought experiment. But after this, if you still believe nothing can move faster than the speed of light, well, then enjoy your magical fantasy world built by math and magicians around theoretical nonsense. And remember, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. It can be counterintuitive and against all your senses because, well, Neil deGrasse said so. And he knows all about the universe because, you know, he read it in a book. So let's begin with the Earth. And on the Earth, we place a guy. And away from the Earth, somewhere distant, we put the planet Venus. Now we're told that that is about 25 million miles from the Earth at its closest. Now on Venus, we place another guy. Let's just pretend. And he's there, and between them two, you give them a solid pole or a solid stick. Now, such a rod may not exist, but neither can a cannon shoot a cannonball around the Earth. So we're doing a thought experiment here. And so if the person on the Earth pulled the stick, it would take two minutes for the guy on Venus to feel it. Get out. I mean, come on. For reals, get the hell out of here. This is our science. This is our truth. Science is going to stand up for this. All right, come on now. This has got to be some sort of joke. So if we move to the sun and we've got someone on the earth and someone on the sun and they've got the same rod and they both pull it, what happens? It would take eight minutes for them each to know the other one pulled the stick. So what happens in the meantime? The stick grows magically. This is our science. Okay, let's move on to Polaris. Now we've got a person on the earth holding the rod with a person on Polaris. And the person on Polaris shoves the rod forward and the person on Earth wouldn't know for 433 years. I mean, who doesn't disagree that this is some bullshit? Is someone gonna stand there and tell me that this is reality? There is no speed limit. If I push the stick, the person on the sun or on the moon or on Venus or across a football field would feel it immediately. Well, let's look at good old Wikipedia, which says the speed of light in vacuum, commonly denoted as little c, is a universal physical constant important in many areas of physics. Its exact value is 299,792,458 meters per second. And they say this is exact because the unit of length, the meter, is defined from this constant. According to special relativity, c is the maximum speed at which all conventional matter and hence all known forms of information in the universe can travel simply isn't true. We can push the stick and it would travel faster than the speed of light. It says for many practical purposes, light and other electromagnetic waves will appear to propagate instantaneously, but for long distances and very sensitive measurements, their finite speed has noticeable effects. In communicating with distant space probes, you know, like Explorer 1 and Explorer 2, currently 13 billion miles from Earth, it could take minutes to hours for the message to get from Earth to the spacecraft or vice versa. The light seen from stars left many years ago, allowing the study of the history of the universe by looking at distant objects. And we see here that it's generally assumed that the fundamental constants such as C, or the speed of light, have the same value throughout space-time, meaning that they do not depend on location and do not vary with time. Down at the bottom we see, more generally, it is normally impossible for information or energy to travel faster than the speed of light. One argument for this follows from the counterintuitive implication of special relativity known as the relativity of simultaneity. If the spatial distance between two events, A and B, is greater than the time interval between them multiplied by the speed of light, then there are frames of reference in which A precedes B, others in which B precedes A, and others in which they are simultaneous. As a result, if something were traveling faster than C relative to an inertial frame of reference, it would be traveling backwards in time relative to another frame and causality would be violated. In such a frame of reference, an effect could be observed before its cause. Such a violation of causality has never been recorded and would lead to paradoxes such as the tachyonic anti-telephone. Well, we just described that happening and now we see why it doesn't work. You know, people gave theologians such a hard time and sometimes rightfully so because they were motivated not by truth, but to support the theological principles which they had already committed to, and these were fixed and determined in advance. 
Such persons are not really engaged in genuine inquiry, but instead a sort of sham reasoning. If you aren't trying to search for the truth, well then you're not asking real questions. Government institutes an official inquiry when genuine inquiry actually seeks the truth no matter the outcome. Pseudo-inquiry seeks to make a case for the truth of some proposition or propositions determined in advance. When the government instituted the Warren Commission, they already knew the outcome. Lee Harvey Oswald, lone gunman. So those on the globe side, those who believe in science, are avoiding examining any apparently contrary evidence too closely to play down its importance or impugn its relevance, to contort themselves into explaining it away by any means possible. If you want an example of this, well, watch these comments. Watch the people saying, I'm an idiot, because they believe that a man on the sun and a man on the earth could be pulling the rod or stick for eight minutes until the other one knew that they pulled it, yet in eight minutes, they might have pulled a half mile worth of rod. So magically, the rod grows until when? What happens after eight minutes? The rod shrinks? Who loses their end? Does the middle disappear? This proves a paradox and proves relativity to be garbage as well as the idea that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. The same people who tell me the speed of light is the speed limit of life tell me that this flew to the moon. And this is not an artist's rendition. This is a photograph. And we televised it live. It was only our first time going. I mean, if they stepped out on the moon and we were attacked by aliens or they died due to an unknown force that crushed their suit, it would definitely help America's prestige and pride to show that all on live TV. Makes all the sense in the world. How could you even question the moon landings? And now I went searching for someone who had some sort of answer to this problem. Oh boy, enjoy yourself looking at this stuff. Let's look at uh, Cora here, this person asking if there was a stick going from the earth to the moon and someone pulled the stick would the person on the moon feel it immediately the answer that had the most amount of votes no the impulse could not by definition because that's what's really important now is by definition not what would happen in reality the impulse could not by definition propagate through the stick any faster than the speed of sound through the stick ignoring the fact that any such stick would collapse under its own weight and that would not being a terribly efficient conductor of sound would likely absorb all the motion as heat. The impulse would take a little over a day to reach the moon. That's the 3,962 meters per second speed of sound through hardwood divided into the 384,000 kilometers between us and the moon. What is even being said here? It would take over a day to reach the moon? So what if I start pulling on the stick? So I can just pull, 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 pull the stick for over a day and the person on the moon would not know. The stick is magically growing. This is what science and theoretical physics and nonsense has done to the world. Corrupted it. Made it a place where people say that it could not, by definition, do something that we know our senses tell us could happen. You could have a stick from here to the moon and that stick could be pulled on for an entire day, according to these people, and it wouldn't be noticed. But then what would happen at the end of that? Do they not realize there's a paradox here? Would the stick just disappear out of the person's hand a day later? Based on what this person's saying, if it took a little bit more than a day to feel it from the moon, then rather than me laughing about it taking eight minutes for somebody to notice on the sun, according to this person, it would take 400 days so I could pull my end of the stick for over a year and the person holding the other end at the sun would have no idea for over a year. And then what happens? What if he was pulling the stick as well? And at the end of a year, what happens? And what does the speed of sound have to do with me pushing one end of a stick? If I push one end of a stick, the other end immediately feels the result. Guys, come on. Think with me here. This is what our science tells us. This is what these men in high places have convinced us all of. Are you ready to stand up and say, nah, horseshit? Or are you ready to bow down to them some more and repeat and parrot Neil deGrasse every day that the universe has no obligation 
to make sense to us. The reason that this universe is under no obligation to make sense to us is because the men explaining it want to have no obligation for their theories to make any sense at all. You science buffs and intellectual clowns think you have it all figured out. Well, I think you're involved in mass deception, in organized and detrimental explanations of excuses for previous garbage theories, and I think you've all ruined science and caused irreparable harm to the human race. You have held back the advancement, the spiritual growth, and the understanding of reality by destroying the knowledge of the world in which we live. You only care about your papers being published, your government funding being continued, and your intellectual status and fame being preserved. Foundations and underlying assumptions are never questioned. You theorize and base your conclusions on previous theories and ideas that never have been proven before. You knowingly or unknowingly are perpetrating the largest deception in the history of the world. It will end soon enough, if not by me, by someone else. Because once someone sees what you're doing, well, they won't rest until you stop. So be kind and don't lie to each other and don't believe in the speed limit of the universe because just like this so-called ball we're spinning on and the so-called space it's spinning in, it's all bullshit. Till next time. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time.